worship you want to accord every praise every praise is to our God sing hallelujah to our God glory hallelujah is to our God every praise every praise is to our God
Gracious Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we welcome and honor you to our Bible study. We pray that the Holy Spirit move freely in our midst and teach us your word of power and truth. We lift up our Lord Jesus, draw us closer to him, and let us grow in the knowledge and revelation of Jesus Christ. And everybody say, Amen and Amen. Grace and peace to you in Jesus' name. This is Brother Marlon greeting, welcoming you to our Wednesday English Bible study of the Evangel Assembly of God, Durham, North Carolina, USA. Today we are continuing our three-part series of our Bible study on the topic occupy till I come. So let us read aloud our text in Luke chapter 19 verses 11 to 27 and I'm reading from the King James Version. And as they heard these things, he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he has given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound had gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in every little, have thou authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound had gained five pounds. And he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I fear thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thy own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury? And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound, and give it to him that had ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he had ten pounds. 
For I say unto you that unto everyone which had shall be given, and from him that had not, even that he had shall be taken away from him. But those mine enemies which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Our topic is taken from Luke chapter 19 verse 13. The command, Occupy till I come. We are on the second part of our three-part series. If you have missed the first part, you can watch it at Evangel Life YouTube. Last Wednesday, we learned that this command of the Lord means that we perform the Father's business now while waiting for the Lord Jesus to return, set up, and rule the kingdom of God on earth. Father's business literally means the things of the Father. Jesus was faithful to the Father's business, which he referred to in Luke chapter 19 verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. That is the same business Jesus want, wants us to engage in faithfully here and now while we are waiting in great expectation of His coming. Remember, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15, And He died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for Him who died for them and rose again. The Father's business is our business. The Father's business is all about letting people who are lost and perishing in sins know that God loves them and that He sent His Son Jesus to save them by dying and paying for the wages of their sins. If they receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, they receive salvation from sins as well as eternal life in restored relationship with God. Hallelujah! God has given each one of us a lifetime in the world to do this work. So when He comes, He will surely ask us what we have done with that life in the Father's business. We also learn that God is the owner of that business and it is important to represent Him reverently, honoring Him by our excellent works on things pertaining to God. We represent God so we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 from the King James Version. It says, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. The God's Word translation says, Therefore we are Christ." representatives. Wow! In International Standard Version, it says, Therefore we are the Messiah's representatives as though God were pleading through us. We plead on the Messiah's behalf. Be reconciled to God. Tonight, the focus of our Bible study is our position and responsibility in the Father's business. If God is the owner of the business of seeking and saving the lost in this world, who are we? Or what is our position and responsibility in the Father's business? 
We are stewards of God's business. Let us read at least two scriptures which refer to us as stewards. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 12 says, Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. In 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 10, Say similarly, as every man had received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So we are uh, managers in Vine's Expository Dictionary of Old and the New Testament words gives the Greek word for steward as oikonomos, which means primarily denoted the manager of a household or estate. The world thinks highly of managers since they hold top positions in a business. And secondly, we are ministers of Christ. It is also a high and honorable position in God's kingdom to be managers and so much more as stewards or managers. Believers are called ministers of Christ. Seriously speaking, ministers in the Bible is not an exclusive title for pastors, evangelists, apostles, missionaries, teachers, or prophets. As far as the Word of God is concerned, every believer is a minister. So tell yourself, I am a minister of Christ. We are servants of God. Now what is the essence of a steward? a manager, and a minister of Christ. What is the basic, significant quality or feature of a steward, a manager, and a minister of Christ? It is servanthood. A steward, manager, and minister of Christ is a servant of God. We see this in at least three translations of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. In English Standard Version, this is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. The Christian Standard Bible, a person, a person should think of us in this way, as servants of Christ and managers of the mystery of God. The Amplified Bible says, So then let us who minister be regarded as servants of Christ and stewards, trustees, administrators, of the mysteries of God that He chooses to reveal. In the parable of pounds, the nobleman called the people he entrusted with his money as his servants. I like the definition of manager of business dictionary.com. It says an individual who is in charge of a certain group of tasks or a certain subset of a company. As stewards, 
managers, ministers of Christ, and servants, servants of God, what are we in charge and responsible of? We are in charge and responsible of promoting the Word of God. Notice that the pounds were distributed equally to all the servants. Each servant was given one pound. The fact that each was given the same amount shows that the pound represents something that all followers of Christ share in common. So what is that one thing that each one of us believers have in common? We are all given the Word of God, central of which is the Gospel, the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ. God expects us to be obedient in spreading the Gospel by praying for the lost to come to the saving knowledge of God, financially planting and supporting the sending of workers to the mission fields, and sharing the gospel, leading others to Christ, discipling new believers and actively engaging in the local church, being witnesses of Jesus at home, at work, and wherever the Holy Spirit leads us. Let us not be like this living thief. A minister tells the story of a man who thinks he is saved but does not want to join a local church. The minister asked the man why he did not like to be a member of a church. The man replied, The dying thief on the cross did not join a church, but he was saved. The minister asked the man further, How about you supporting missions? The man answered, No, the dying thief on the cross did not support missions, and was he not saved? Finally, the minister said, Oh, yes. The dying thief was saved. And you must remember, however, that he was a dying thief. As for you, you are a living one. When we are not fulfilling the assignment given us by Jesus, we are like thieves in the sense that we deprive people of the opportunity to hear the gospel, know Jesus as Lord and Savior, and be saved. Could it be possible that someday some of our friends and loved ones would be in hell and blaming us because we did not share to them the good news of salvation? So let us follow the true to life example of Henry. P. Crowell, the founder of Quaker Oats. After hearing a sermon by Dwight Moody, Mr. Crowell prayed to God, I cannot be a good preacher, but I can be a good businessman. Lord, if you will let me make money, I will use it in your service. For over 40 years, Mr. Crowell faithfully gave 60 to 70 percent of his income to God's work. And God blessed him and his business. He went home to the Lord long time ago, but his business continues. Well, Thank God for Mr. Crowell for being faithful to God and his business. That is why also I enjoy eating every morning Quaker oats, don't you? 
I am not advocating that we do exactly what Mr. Crowell did as steward of God's business. What I am encouraging everyone to do is seek God and hear His clear specific instructions on how we should carry out our individual parts in the Father's business. In conclusion, I will leave us to, tonight with two, with two important questions that we need to settle between us and God if we are to be His faithful stewards. Do we see ourselves seriously involved with the Father's business of bringing the gospel to people in this world, especially those within our reach, our families, friends, co-workers, neighbors, and people we meet? Or are we attracted to the ways of this world and are caught up to spending most of our time in building up a career, reputable family name, enjoying a sport or hobby or some secular causes, reasons, and endeavors. These social activities may not be evil in themselves, but they are consuming much of our time, effort, and priority that many times we lose sight or focus of our divine calling as managers, ministers, and servants of God. There is a poem written by C.T. Studd. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. And my attention was caught in the, the last sentence where it says, And when I am dying, how happy I will be if the lamp of my life has been burned out for thee. Let us pray. Our Almighty Father God, in Jesus' name, we give you praise and thanksgiving for entrusting us the gospel and calling us to serve you. Enable us with the power of the Holy Spirit to be faithful and fruitful in fulfilling your command to occupy until Jesus comes. To you be the glory, our love and worship. Amen and amen. Thank you and God bless you for joining our Bible study. Kindly share to others and be good stewards of God's Word. For our videos, go to Evangel Life YouTube. Now, sing with us our clo closing song. Amen and Amen. You did not wait for me draw near to you, but you clothe yourself with frail humanity. You did not wait for me to cry out to you, but you let me hear your voice calling me. Frail humanity. You did 
not wait for me to cry out to you, but you let me hear your voice calling me, and I'm forever grateful to you. I'm forever grateful for the cross. I'm forever grateful. Through the seasons